Hi everyone, Andrew Carruthers here for Sam Via. One of the most challenging things as a hairdresser is dealing with hairlines. And one of the first steps we always take as we look at our client's hair is we need to go through and look at those hairlines, find out where all those little twists and turns and cowlicks are. I hate that word. So what we found here is on Lauren, we found she's got a crazy hairline. And we actually are gonna start taking this, this haircut shorter and shorter. On a very long bob like this, it's probably not gonna affect your outcome too dramatically. But as the hair goes shorter and shorter, now those hairlines are gonna be a much stronger player. So what I wanna show you guys is what we found is a lot of times we can get rid of this kind of stuff. Now, let's say I was doing kind of a bob shape on her. What this hairline is going to do is it's going to create unnecessary body coming out from the inside of the haircut. What I could do here is if I did want to leave a bob shape, I just part off that hair that creates all, all of my problem. Now, I want you to get the permission from your guest before you do this. Because if you go in and you just kind of slam this hair off and she's not ready for it, it could be a panic in the chair moment because she might not be sure what you're doing back there. So talk to her about her hairline and what kind of challenges it's creating in the haircut and then get an agreement with your guest. Is it okay if I take this step to make your haircut better? As Soon as they agree, you're clear to go and I promise you they're gonna thank you for it later. So what I would do is I would take a reversible blending scissor and what's important about this is that whichever the, the way these teeth go as we cut is going to push the hair in a certain direction. So let's say I wanted this to kick out and up. I would make sure that those teeth were pushing out and up, but that's not what we want, of course. We want this to push down and into the nape. So what I'll make sure I do is that I have these teeth pointing down and into the nape as I do this. So I'm gonna take and I'm literally going to just start to remove that hair right down there at the nape. And you can see I'm being really aggressive about this, guys. And some of you might be cringing at home because that's a lot of hair just disappearing there. Don't fear the short hair because when she starts to blow dry this and she doesn't have those challenges with the hair kicking up and pushing the bob outward, she's gonna thank you for this. Now, again, I'm using that reversible blending scissors so that I have softness through this. If I came in with a regular scissor and just kind of cut that in, it's not gonna look as soft and lived in as if I remove this with that blending scissor. So I'm just basically almost whittling the hair away with the scissor rather than coming in and just creating a hard line. Now, I'm not gonna take it all the way down to the scalp because there, from a five foot distance, that still looks completely and totally soft, and it just looks blended. Now, here's the thing is we have to remember, we have to remind our guests of this too, that most of our uh, friends and family, they don't see us from here. If they do, you got a creepy friend and family group. Now, <laughs> the thing that's really important here is that if we're gonna talk to our clients in that way, let them know, hey, from five feet, this is gonna look so natural and easygoing. Just don't have your friends get that close to you. So what happens is then when we drop down more of a bob shape over top of that, it's gonna allow this to sit in cleaner and closer to the neckline. Now, that's if we're doing a bob shape. What happens if I wanna go shorter, which I do? That first step will remain the same, and then I have a couple options as I start to cut this hair away. What I could do is I could leave this long enough that this actually sits over top of, of that. Now the nice thing is what happens right now in fashion is women are okay with going closer and shorter than almost ever before. And what's really cool is this androgynous feel that we're seeing on the runways, we're able to translate that into our work behind the chair. And especially when it's interior like this, because we can really take a lot of this hair away and it can still stay soft because there's things falling over top of it. But what's great is people are less scared to be aggressive about going shorter. So 
what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you real quick how that happens. I'm again using the reversible blending shear. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want softness here. Now, again, I want to make sure the teeth of the blending scissor are going in towards the nape. I'm going to use a blending shear over comb technique. And I'm just going to take that hair away. Now, what I'm going to do is it's OK that I didn't remove all of the hair. You can see all the hair's not gone there yet. And I just did maybe five or six cuts, and I'm going to let it drop. Now, the reason I'm going to do that is because when I go in a second time, I'm going to adjust my comb position just slightly to give myself another little uh, dimension in the texture. It's not going to be a flat line. Because, I mean, if you go in and you just start going at one solid line with the blending scissor, you can still create a pretty solid line. But I want this to stay soft. So I'm going in, and just working the hair away with a couple different swipes, rather than going at it in one solid panel. And again, what that's doing for me is it's giving me softness. <laughs> now, I'm doing the squats here for you guys, because I want you to be able to see over my shoulder. If I wanted to do this in the salon, I would definitely be much more squared and much more natural body position. But that doesn't necessarily work for you guys at home. So I'm going to go ahead and keep doing my squats here, so you can see over my shoulder. Now, I'm doing this on dry hair. What if I wanted to take this away a little quicker and do it in a wet haircut? Absolutely fine. The only difference is that as you do a wet cut, you're not necessarily getting the same visual impact. You're not going to see the hairline develop in the same way that you would if you did this dry. With it dry, I can see exactly what's happening with every single cut that I take. Personally, we prefer to go in it with dry hair. So that's what we're going to encourage you to do, is do the dry hair. On people that don't have as strong of necklines, maybe I would go in and go ahead and just knock this out while I was wet. Now again, just using that blending scissor to soften and whittle that hair away. I'm going to come in one more time from this corner, just to blend that detachment. And then this is going to create a really nice base for us to actually drop this next section over top of and work with it without the interference of that gnarly hairline she has. So again, if you just need the hairline gone, just section that away. Use that reversible blending scissor to just pull that texture away from the, the head and remove that crazy cowlick. This is exactly the tool you need to blend those down and make them disappear and have it just appear flawless and natural. Guys, thank you so much for watching today. I'm Andrew Carruthers for Sanvia.